Welcome to uh, Paths of Glory for Beginners, but um, I also want to show you how to play this solo with the so-called Stupa Joe method, <laughs> that and using Vassal as well. So the first thing is we have to make sure we've got the same modules. I'm using module 9.7 for Paths of Glory and 3.2.17 for <coughs> Vassal. Uh, so, uh, and I, I will take you through this as if you are a beginner with Paths of Glory um, and a beginner with this module as well. Um, so you can see how to set it up to make life easier for you. So the first thing to do is to um, start a new game offline. So that means clicking here. It says select setup. So we're going to do classic map campaign scenario, which is a standard way of uh, starting to learn this excellent game okay um <laughs> it's now loaded up and it's asking you uh how do you want to play so we're going to play solitaire uh and then finish and if you just wait the map will come up it's quite graphics heavy uh so it might take a, a, a little while to come up onto the screen but it should be okay so i'm going to set this up uh ready to go um, and I will explain to you how you do the log files um, in, in the best way so that if you make a mistake, you can go back um, and uh, you don't have to trash the game completely. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to set up the uh, mandated offensives. Mandated offenses are um, offenses uh, which you have to do within the turn or you'll uh, lose a victory point. Um, uh, there are CP mandatory offensives and AP mandatory offensives. So I will roll both of them uh, now before the cards are even issued. So MO for mandatory offensives, and then uh, the blue die is for allies and the gray die is for the central powers. So we'll roll those. So we've got a central power one for one, which is an Austro-Hungarian attack. So if you right click on this and then uh, do that, you should be able to move it there, and it will report up here CP Mandatory Offensive Austro-Hungary. And then we go down here for the Allied one, and the Allied one is a British attack, so uh, number three here. So, again, if you right-click on this and go for Britain, that's it. Okay, so basically I have six card plays, and both uh, sides have to do these mandatory attacks. Okay, so now I'm going to set up the Stuka Joe method of actually playing this and uh, there's a few little workarounds that we need to do so the first thing is i'm going to draw the central power deck so what you do is you right click on here and draw all of the cards like that and i'm going to click on this uh, cp hand in a minute and as soon as i do i'm going to flip all the cards over flip all cards okay so now i don't know where they are or what they are uh, but i do know this is my entire draw hand. So now I'm going to set up the Stuka Joe method of doing things. Um, and the way you do that is you kind of randomly pick one of these cards and uh, lay them out. And I generally do it next to the map here. So one, uh, two, um, three, uh, you want five, uh, Piles. There we go. Five piles. Um, now all the rest of them go into the middle pile here. So you just uh, drag them over and drop them on. Okay. And just keep doing that. There's uh, there's only ten or so cards that need to go onto here. That's fine. I think they're all there. Yeah, so we don't need this anymore. All right, that's fine. And uh, Guns of August, uh, which we are going to play, is going to go on the top here. And the first two cards are flipped over. So that's this one and this one are flipped over before we start. Now we do the same with the Allied decks. So you right-click on here, uh, draw all of the cards. Okay, as soon as you get into here, you flip all the cards. Whoops. 
There you go. Flip all the cards and then construct your deck. Okay. Same sort of thing. Randomly pick a card, get it into the right position. There we go. Randomly pick a card. And uh, one for down here. One for down here. I'm just thinking about it. And all of the rest of them go into the central draw pack here. So again, we do all of that. And again, we flip the first two cards, but not the draw uh, pack. Okay, there we go. I think that's all of them. So quick double check, I haven't missed any. That's fine. Okay. All right, study that up a little bit. Okay. Now, uh, on the Stuka Joe method, these uh, cards uh, positions uh, is card uh, A, B, uh, C, which is the draw pack, D, and E. Okay. And you have to roll a dice at the beginning of each of the turns and uh, refer to the Stuka Joe instructions for Paths of Glory, which uh, you can uh, get from um, GMT's site, I think, actually. But if not, uh, you can just uh, uh, Google it and um, you'll be able to find uh, the uh, latest details on that. Right now, we, th then we don't need to bother with any of this again, and we don't use these hands up here, okay? Neither do we use hand count here. Now we are ready to begin. So um, what we'll do now is save the game state. So you save the game state by um, save game as. Okay, and uh, I've already set a folder up here. So I'll uh, save this as POG uh, setup. And if I want to go back to it, I can. And that saves that. Now, in this system, um, every time we do a card play, we're going to have a separate log file for it. Um, so we need to be fairly organized in how we do these logs. So the first thing to do is to start the log up. So begin the log file. OK, so we're going to call this 001. And uh, then it's going to be uh, turn one. OK, then it's going to be uh, CP because they're the first people to play and it's card play one. OK, and then the next one we do will be 002 turn one AP card play one and then 003 turn one CP card play two and so on. OK, you'll see it sounds more complicated than it actually is. So save it. And now we're uh, logging. OK, so we're going to start with Guns of August here. Um, and I'm going to have a look at what I've got. I should have flipped this guy's cards over, so we'll flip him, flip him. Okay, and we can see what they've got um, as well. Um, and we can make our strategy according to that. There's nothing wrong with uh, looking at the other guy's cards as it is and seeing exactly what he's got. So Russian reinforcements he's got, which he can't use, so that will probably be used as an ops card. And British reinforcements, which you also can't use, which you might save, actually, to use on the next uh, hand. I don't know. Um, what have I got? Uh, Austro-Hungary reinforcements, which I'll probably use as an ox card. And Entrench, which I'll probably use as an ox card as well. Um, and Guns of August, which I'm going to play right now. Now, to play the event, you simply right-click on it. And you click Players Event. And you will see up here, it says Guns of August marker placed at turn one. So if you look up here, there's turn one, and there's Guns of August. It's automatically moved the CP War status to two. Why? Because Guns of August, which is now in the removed card section, has a two after it. And a star means once it's been played as an event, it is removed from the pack. So. Um, it's done all that for us. Um, if we look at the at what we actually get here, it says the Liege Four is destroyed. Um, yeah, it's, that's a destroyed marker there. So it's done that for us. 
place the German first and second army in the liege space. So let's just check that. Yep, there they are. Um, uh, the German first, second and third armies are activated for combat. There we go. They're activated for combat there. OK, so it's all been done for you. So you don't have to do any of this. Now, all you need to do now is make a decision. Now, decision generally at this point is should you attack the BEF with a weakened attack on the fifth army? Why? Because the BEF is a pain and the quicker you can reduce them, the better. Um, but on the other hand, the BEF will cause one of your armies to flip. So that's not going to be so good because they won't be able to advance. Um, so it could be a problem. Um, you may not be, be able to advance into Sedan with the weakened attack either because the French army might well flip the uh, German third army, uh, which is over here. And if he flips during the attack, he's not going to be able to advance at all. So one of the more standard openings is uh, to really go for this uh, fifth army here. Now, if I had a Landwehr uh, card, which allows me to kind of unflip my armies, I'd have no hesitation in going for the BEF here because the BEF will flip one of these, but if I can unflip it on the next turn, which Landwehr will let me do, then I don't care about it. Um, but I really don't want them to um, flip me if uh, if they don't need to. So I will do a flank attack on Sedan. Now, the way I log this is I will say German 1, German 2, German 3, flank. And then I change to do that. And I'll put French 5th there. OK, so we know it's a flank attempt. Um, the flank is plus one. I could put that here as well if I want, I guess. Flank's definitely a plus one. How do you know if it's a plus one or not? Um, let's just put that in a bracket. OK, how do you know if it's plus one or not? Well, um, you assign one of these stacks to pin it um, here, and the other one um, can be a flanker. Now. Uh, the the if you want the plus one, this other guy mustn't be uh, in contact with any other target. Um, so, for instance, if there were French armies here, then you could still flank it, but you wouldn't get the plus one. So, uh, because he's not in contact with anybody else apart from the guy he's trying to flank, that will give you a plus one on the die roll. So, we'll give it a shot and see if we can get a successful flank out of this. So that's the grey dice. Yep, that is a flank. That will be six. That's a flank. Um, anything above three is a flank. Um, so we, we should be fine. So that is, that is a successful flank. So the first thing is uh, 15 strength. So I'll just put 15 here uh, versus uh, three. Uh, and a success um, flank. OK, so that means we do the 15 uh, first. So if we do the 15 first, it means, if we have a look at our fire tables up here, um, we are probably going to get some serious damage on the uh, Fifth Army um, before they even uh, can attempt to attack us back. So let's give it a shot. Um, here's our uh, grey die. Let's roll that. Three. OK, what's that on 15? That's five losses. So I will report that down here as five losses to the French. OK, so if I have to go back to this, I know exactly what has happened. All right. So five losses to the French is a, definitely a flip, but uh, it would need to be six losses to flip again. So it flips once. OK, but it's five losses. So now they attack back, but they can only attack back on a two. So uh, I'll put that down here to attack for the French. OK, um, and let's roll them. OK, so they get a three. So let's have a look. Two attack, three is a two loss. Now I will write down the two losses. So two loss, two losses to German. And of course, that doesn't affect them at all. And uh, we got five losses. So we're going to have to retreat two spaces uh, now. 
so I would generally think about retreating down to probably here. Okay, and that will allow them to advance. Now, they could advance all three if you want, but I don't think so. And uh, they they cannot follow uh, the advance into Chateau Thierry because this is a forest space and you have to stop your advancing there. Uh, with this guy uh, pulling back two, they could follow him normally, but not through a forest. So this one advances into Saddam. And if you carefully right-click the area around here, you can place CP control on there uh, as you move it, which is a good thing to do, or to try to remember to do anyway. Now, why have I moved here? Because if I don't move here and I move, say, into Paris uh, or into Amiens, uh, that would leave this wide open, um, and uh, it wouldn't take much to just drive uh, straight through this hole. Okay, there would be a hole there in uh, Madame. And you might say, well, can't you do that through Amiens? Um, yeah, but um, it's more tricky uh, because he can't stop in Amiens, Calais or Ostend for a while anyway because of a special rule. So the chances of him actually going this way uh, are a bit slim. Uh, plus, uh, he could produce uh, an easy hole here um, he could uh, overextend himself, which is a problem uh, with beginners of overextending themselves, and then and they just get cut off. And once you get cut off in this game, um, you're not going to be able to recover easily. So let's avoid all that and block this French hole anyway. Uh, okay, so that's the finish of that uh, turn, and uh, I will leave it there and pick it up for the. Um, next one. So we do that by ending the log file, uh, which will write it. And there we have it.